At the onset of his career, Ted Wynn was recognized by the gospel world as a proud prodigy of the voices of Binghamton and one half of the Christian super duo, Ted and Cherry. Years later, a new lock-free autonomous Ted was introduced to audiences as a solo artist. Since venturing out on his own, he has become known as a chart-topping solo singer, entertainer, and entrepreneur. The title track from his first solo project, Balance, spent weeks guarding the number one spot on mainstream radio in the United Kingdom, while the lifter found its way into the top 10 Billboard gospel charts. Ted and I decided to meet up in Atlanta's Old Fourth Ward to grab a bite and settle a long overdue score on the track. And in between his 101 business calls, we found some time to talk about his upcoming musical project, Love for Fitness, and his thriving music venture. Hey. So I'm on the way here, and the traffic is like crazy. I'm trying to get over and the, and off the exit. All right, later. So the issue, it really has to do with, you know, what they're willing to pay versus what we want them to pay. I can see that. You're gonna keep 91 cents. So if, if you're keeping 91 cents, you're only gonna pay him 10, you better make 80 cents a download. The only things that we're talking about right now is taking him to Europe to work with some artists, but. Not, 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 um, the land that I know of. I'll give you guys a call back later, later this afternoon. All right, thanks. Hey, how are you? So I'm on the way here and the traffic is like crazy and then there's like a truck beside me. It's trying to get over in the, off the exit. It's two lanes. But he is in, not at the light. He's like stopped like, way far from the light, just trying to get over. So every car behind him is just waiting. So I'm just like, that. he's the reason there's traffic, people like him. Can I have uh, some, you have oatmeal? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Sorry. Wayne, what's up? What's going on, man? Sorry. What, what are you doing? Working as usual. <laughs> Your stuff? Well, today is like harassing stuff. Like I have some crazy stuff happening with this producer. Two of my producers actually on this album and we're trying to get more money than they're willing to pay right now. So my producers are not happy. Are these gospel artists or mainstream secular artists? Well, they write everything. Most of my writers uh, on the admin side, they do gospel, most of them. Um, some of them are segueing into some other areas and making some, you know, moving in some other directions. Um, on the production side, all of my producers I manage do mainstream music. So you've heard them on lots of different records from T-Pain to Trey Songz to Omarion to, yeah, so to Juvenile to Nicki Minaj. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's about to get real crazy. Does that create <laughs> any kind of conflict? Like, Is it a conflict for me? Yes. No, I'm not conflicted at all. Do, do I look <laughs> conflicted? <laughs> no, no I'm, that, like, I'm totally fine. The, the thing of it is this, it's business, you know, mm -hmm. for me. And one of the things that I've learned is I'm, I'm very unemotional about business and it just is what it is. Like it's legal and you know, I'm helping people to handle what is important to them. Ratchet is not a church, it's a it's a business, it's a company. You know what I'm saying? You're right, but Are you Ted from Ted and Sherry? No. You're not. Yes. I've seen you before. Oh thank you. Nice to meet you too. Same to you. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I need to make take this call. Actually, I need to call this client right back. Okay. I'm sorry. Huh? Get on my phone. Where are you? I mean, they can guarantee. I can get them to guarantee you a certain dollar amount. But if it's not above that, are you willing to let it? Willing to let it go? 
Okay. That's fair. That's smart. That's smart. I get that. Yeah, 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 I get that. So we can, I mean, I can have that conversation with our attorney um, today. So we can try to get that whole thing. Um, you just get wrapped up. I know it's time sensitive. I want to get back to them because I want to get you guys paid as quickly as possible. So. <laughs> All right, I will, I will do that. And I will give you, uh, I'll give you a call back. So what made you get into fitness? Um, honestly, like, out of the blue, I started having issues with my blood pressure. And so, oh, really? okay. yeah, that made me say, you know, I need to do something fast. And I wasn't eating badly, so I guess it was just genetic because my dad has high blood pressure. Uh, okay, so well, I mean, don't don't let your high blood pressure be be the reason I'm finna whoop you out here. <laughs> oh, you're not gonna be. Me. Oh, I'm I'm about to tell you. I'm about I'm about to let you have it. Look, my last name is Win. It's my last name lose. is Prince, so I'm already above <laughs> you already. I'm ready to do this. That don't mean nothing. What? Don't break nothing. A mile? Two? Yeah, let's do two. So that's eight times around, right? Yeah, eight times around. I'm passed out now. Ready? I'm ready. I need you to hold up, though. Wait, 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 no. wait. No. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> It ain't how you start, it's how you finish, huh? Right, but you finished last, so. <laughs> but somebody said you got to lose to win sometimes, so. Come on, Fed. <laughs> <laughs> no. What was the transition like for you? Um, just, you know, going from the community choirs to singing with the Richard Smallwood, <laughs> you know, who we all love, right. and into your own, own thing. Well, I mean, I started singing with the Voices of Binghamton in Memphis. Okay. Um, outside of that, I started a group called Deliverance and uh, you know, churchy. So <laughs> Sherry was a part of that group. And so from there, we started Ted and Sherry um, before any of the other stuff started. Um, so we were singing actually before I started singing with Richard Smallwood, but because there wasn't a, a project or kind of a national right. stage, right. people didn't really know. And so interestingly, uh, our, the Ted and Sherry first record and the first record I recorded on with Richard Smallwood came out the very same day. It was pretty crazy. Um, so I was kind of doing both at the same time. Then the solo piece started um, a few years ago. Um, Sherry and I decided to do solo records, and so that's you know that's where we are right now. It's been it's been an interesting evolution. Is there any hope of a Ted and Sherry reunion? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. at some point. Like, like you we, guys got to. I mean, yeah, just... sure. I mean, we understand there's a fan base. Yeah. We understand that um, you know we believe what we did was very unique. Um, it was. Was, you know, it was original. It was, and, yeah, you know, and like I love the group. I, it's cool. I think that it's, it's the, you know, the industry is missing. That. Sure, I can see that. I mean, because honestly, you know, there was BB and CC as a male female duet mm -hmm. before us, and then we came afterwards. I mean, stylistically, I think we were different. Yeah. But sure. just in terms of what it looks like, you know, male female, like it was, it was that right. that same thing. And I don't think there's really been that since. So, so your project now that you're currently working on, um, have you? gotten a name for it, thought of a name for it? Yeah, I always start with, with titles. So the name okay. of the project is Perspective. Um, my first solo CD was entitled Balance. And so this one, you know, I entitled Perspective because I feel like in a lot of instances, um, 
everything is about how you look at it. True. You know, in True. terms of if you know if you view the glass half empty, half empty or half full. Right. You know, if you look at what you have that's positive or what you have that's negative. If if this, this is a reason to celebrate or reason to complain. And when the, the new single that's that's currently out now is. You are the reason. You are the reason. Yeah, you are the reason. That. The first single. Um, you know, the the take on it is really interesting. Um, because I traditionally write songs where I'm speaking to people, okay. from my own perspective or from God's perspective. So this time I wanted to write a song that spoke to God. And so I simply, you know, thought about the fact that God is the reason that I live, um, is the reason I'm here, and the song says I'm forever grateful to you because you bring me through, continually bring me through. And so I felt like not only was it my experience, but that people would be able to connect and relate to those lyrics. Because for a lot of people, we can say that no matter who's come and who's gone, God has been consistent in our lives and that God is the reason that we are here. New York or LA? That's hard. I mean, I love, they're very different spaces. So I love them both. I probably like LA a little bit more right now. Um, it used to be New York. In terms of weather? Yeah, in terms of weather, in terms of the industry, in terms of just things to do, places to go. Like, I love LA, but New York is, there's no city like it on the planet. So. Okay, so traveling to shopping. I like to travel and shop when I travel. <laughs> <laughs> Sitcom or news? Definitely the news. News is what's happening. Like, love it or hate it. So I like to be informed and then look at what I've gotten from the news and see maybe how I can change it. So I do watch some shows. I watch some funny shows. What do you watch? I watch, I love Game of Thrones. I love uh, Boardwalk Empire. I love the show called... Uh, the news show that's on HBO. Newsroom. Newsroom. I oh, yeah, love, I love newsroom. newsroom. It's I love amazing. Newsroom. I love newsroom. Uh, so, you know, I have shows like that that I watch. House of Cards, House of Lies, you know. No Scandal? I love Scandal. I was about to say, yeah. man. You gotta I got to watch Scandal. You got to watch Scandal. Kerry Washington, man. Kerry Right. All right. Well, you want to do this again? Yeah, I'm ready to beat you again. No, you Let's go. Be, you ain't about to beat me now, so <laughs> I, I, I had to warm up. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, Ed. Yes, sir. Welcome back, man. Thank you. One of the things I wanted to um, talk to you about that we didn't get a chance because I was beating you in the race. No, I'm uh, not sure what race you're talking so, about. It's so footage. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> How has Ted changed from growing up, you know, back in Memphis and in, in church in Memphis to Ted now? <laughs> in a word, dramatically. <laughs> uh, you know, growing up, uh, I think I've been a part of every type of, Christian faith almost, that's possible. You know, I've been Baptist, I've been Kojic, independent holiness. My mother was apostolic, like, I think we, everything, but maybe Methodist. Like, we've done, really? I, so I just know all the expressions of all those different uh, faith, faiths inside, you know, of Christianity. Right. Um, but just growing up in really strict church, you know, we didn't go to movies, we didn't play organized sports, you didn't wear shorts, you didn't date unless you were getting ready to get married. Like, it was, it was intense. You know, the women didn't wear pants, and they wear makeup, right, they, right, know, right, 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 all right. of that. So I, I grew from that to leaving there, and I just, you know, became a part of uh, churches that were a little bit different, that taught a little bit differently. They had some different ideas about, you know, what scriptures may have really meant about something versus what maybe I had learned they, they, they meant. And so through my own personal study, my own relationship with God and spending time with God, my thoughts and ideas about God really evolved. And I think what's probably most significant is that God evolved in my spiritual eyes from this man, you know, this big man on the bench waiting to just like beat you down if you did something wrong, right, to right, love right. and acceptance and affirmation and just positivity. Like it was, it was a complete 180 of how I felt, you know, about God and who I felt God was. And so, through that evolution, through that process, I learned a lot about myself. I learned to, to love myself. I learned to accept myself. And I learned to see myself through, as I believe, in God's eyes. Politics. I know that you're very much into politics. Sure. Um, how important do you feel like, or do you think that politics is or plays a part in just um, in, in your life? It is the power that we have as a democracy to influence change and set um, you know, laws, rules, regulations, um, all those things that affect everybody in the country. So it's, it's really essential. Um, and that's why I, as a citizen of this country, I've really um, made it a point to pay attention to know who's running, what they stand on, right. what they'll do for the country. And more important than 
just how it impacts me is how it impacts the larger you know country like people at large because I think that we live in a space and time where you need to be able to do what is best to protect your rights but also fight for the protection of the rights of other people even if those rights are not your own I love that I have the right to pray when I want to and talk to God like I want to and protect your right not to if you don't want to. Do you feel like the, the church is missing that part or do you think that they get it or do you think the church needs to become more involved into, in politics? In just my experience, um, you know, growing up in church, politics just wasn't something that was high on the priority list. It wasn't, sure. it wasn't I, I know I didn't get taught anything about it, you know, until much later in life when I sought it out myself. Well, I think there are two ways to look at that. One, I think we have to be really careful when we have these conversations and we talk about the church mm -hmm. because it gives the idea that there is a church right, and okay. there is no monolithic church. Like there's no one church that thinks, you know, the same thing about everything. Right. The church is comprised of people. And so people have varied views, varied experiences and the like. So um, I think that an element of the church at one particular point in time, if we go back to the, to the era of Dr. King, who was a Baptist preacher and pastor, was very instrumental in civil rights, which is directly connected to politics. Mm -hmm. And so I think there have been times in our country's history where it has been, um, we've seen the church or an element of church kind of move in a certain way to help move some ideas forward and change some things and bring about equality for all people. Um, but do I think the church as kind of in the general context, yeah, just, just should be involved in politics? No, no, uh, I don't. Uh, I think that's good, that's a very slippery slope, and I think that people who are a part of church should be involved, but not the church as a whole. How have you seen the church change? Um, and again, the church, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just in the past ten years, like from you know ten years ago to sure. now, because I've just seen a lot, personally a lot of uh, progressive movements and, and changes, and and, and, mm -hmm. and even in thought. You sure. know, mentality. Well, I think that in general, church has evolved. Um, we've gone from like, you know, choirs and what have you to like everybody has a praise team now, and some right. churches don't even have choirs anymore. So it's fine, whatever works for you in that particular capacity. Now you have, you know, worship centers and life centers, and like the names are changing because mm -hmm. of certain ideas I think that people had associated with the word church. And so for some institutions, they wanted to move away from maybe there's some stigma they may have felt, okay. and, and rename kind of what we're doing, rebranded, if you will. Earlier we were out and you were getting a whole lot of phone calls doing, <laughs> <laughs> doing my interview. <laughs>artists make, you know, when navigating the music industry, you know, from a business standpoint. Early on, I had some instances, some situations where, you know, I was just excited about, oh, you know, this opportunity has presented itself, and this is something I always wanted, you know, from the time I was eight, and, you know, acting out in the mirror and performing scenes and doing my acceptance speeches and all that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never thought about the business part. I just wanted to do it because mm -hmm. this is my dream. I want to be on stage. I like the lights, the glam, the camera, blah, 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 blah. People are very um, impatient, okay. and I think that they're impatient and they don't really understand what it is that they are signing. Mm -hmm. And so you have these situations where somebody will be given a contract and, you know, they're excited, they want to get out there, they want to, you know, they got a ministry they put forward, they want to get on stage, they want to change the world. Like, right. great, wonderful. But they don't understand what they're agreeing to. Because these are terms written on a paper, piece of paper, uh -huh. or, pieces, or pieces of paper, or whatever it is, in English, you know, <laughs> not like it's Arabic, like, that you're assigning to. You go through these changes and then things don't work out like people want, and they, or they find out the truth of what's really inside of it, right. and they're really upset at the person who drafted it, and you did me wrong, and did it. I'm like, well, they didn't really trick you. Like, right, they put it there before you. Yeah, but you weren't patient enough to have an expert, like a, a lawyer, mm -hmm. look at it and tell you exactly what it is. And I think that's one of the biggest things that people do. Um, one of the biggest mistakes, if you will, to use, that, to use the word that you asked in the question, um, is just not being informed. So I've had to talk to people and say, look, you are a business person. Right. First, before anything else, 
when you start, because people say, well, you know, I, I want to do it, I want to be you know, some ministry, and God called me to do it, and that's wonderful. But you don't need to record CDs to do ministry, right? This is true. You don't. You don't need to go on TV and travel around and do radio interviews and TV interviews to do ministry. Ministry is service. You can do that anywhere. At the point where you start exchanging goods for money, it's business. And I, and I think that's what, what a lot of artists, not just in the gospel community, but also just, I mean, across the board, sure. you know, they miss that piece. Sure. I have had the pleasure of, you know, uh, being a part of the audience um, at, at some of your performances. You can really sing. What happens when you step on stage? Well, from the, the, the leg kick to... <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> I mean, you, you're very passionate. One thing that comes across is that you're very, very passionate um, about what you're singing. It's, it's a transitional space, mm -hmm. you know, because at that point, I'm really connected to the lyrics, the music, um, and the mission at that point is to convey a message to the audience um, and to hopefully inspire somebody, to help somebody, to encourage somebody. And I take my music and what I do very seriously in that way because I do know how impactful music is across the world. Right. And I've gotten, you know, emails and messages from people and letters and people I've seen as I was traveling around who said your song, you know, helped me through a divorce or my father's death or my you know, my mom's, you know, physical issues or whatever space they were in or whatever they, whatever they were going through and dealing with. And to hear that is, is encouraging. I'm in the process of finishing up the second solo record, which is entitled Perspective. One of my favorite songs on the project is a song I wrote called Be Healed. I really wanted to, to say something, sing something to people who are in any type of space where they need healing. Whatever's happened in your life, whether it's, it's emotional, psychological, spiritual, or physical, I want to convey that message of being healed. Thank you so much for stopping by. I am so, 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 so honored that you came by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.